so generally people get confused in this when they start with devops they think it's a very vast and uh, they start yeah. learning everything at a time but that's not the thing when once we, we get into these technologies so devops technology so you first need to understand what is the software life cycle development so your software delivery needs to be at very high pace and with very high efficiency it means uh, you can today's market is very competitive you cannot wait yeah. for 6 months to get your product released in the market you another engaging episode of woman lexus mini podcast this is arpita gupta delighted to be your host today and we have got an amazing topic lined up for discussion joining us is an exceptional guest from the tech industry mr udit gaurav bringing with him a wealth of expertise and insight our conversation will dive into future of cloud native computing trends and prediction from an industry expert get ready for an illuminating exploration of emerging technology and expert foresight to help you navigate the career evolving landscape of cloud native computing so hello that sir a warm welcome to woben lexus uh, hi arpita thanks for inviting me here We are thrilled to have you join as our distinguished guest and also as a DevOps mentor at Wubble. Your role as a senior software engineer at CNCF Litmus Kiosk Project Maintainer position you as a leading voice in the field of cloud native computing. Your unique perspective promises to add depth and value to our discussion and we eagerly anticipate the intriguing trends and prediction you will share with our audience let's embark on the insightful conversation and uncover the future of cloud native computing together on wubble nexus yeah let's get started so my first question to you is if you could only eat one cuisine for the rest of your life what would it be Yeah, I think for that I will choose Italian cuisine because that is not a part of my daily diet plan, and probably I will miss it from my life. So I will have that one as the last Amazing. one. Amazing! If you could have a robot do one task for you every day, what it would be and why? Uh, when you say robot, uh, I generally think of some surveillance kind of thing, so that I don't want to risk someone's life on that. So yeah, I will choose. Okay. that part okay so if you could instantly become an expert in any field unrelated to your current position what it would be so if it's not related to my things then uh, my second most preference was getting into the army force so i will probably choose that part i'm pretty uh, uh like uh, i am having a fomo of that so i i'll probably choose that amazing and My last icebreaker question to you is: What's your life mantra, which keep you motivated every day? Yeah, the mantra of my life is to work hard, uh, get the things done um, at uh, any cost. Uh, if you are not finding a right path, just choose an alternative path to do it. Uh, th- that is what the motive of life is, right? We cannot uh, sit sit and uh, think of doing things. So yeah, that Amazing. is the thing which I keep. Uh, yeah. So, what inspired you to pursue a career in cloud cloud native computing? Yeah. So, uh, at the time when I was shifting into the uh, this world, uh, corporate world, so I was uh, there, there was a shift in uh, from a monolithic applications or to the cloud services, where all these services are running through clouds. Lot of new cloud services was coming up. So that that there there, there was a shift there and. somehow in that shift i got an opportunity to get into the cloud world system uh, otherwise uh, i wasn't aware much of it but yeah i have few uh, concepts of knowing each terminologies what this work how how does it work but getting the real world application of it when when once you once you get into it you will get that so uh, yeah i think from that is how i get started but yeah when once i get started i came to know it's very useful uh it, uh, everyone should uh, now we are anyways trending towards it so uh, everyone should learn this technology and implement it in their uh, daily life inspiring to hear that can you share a bit about your journey as a senior software engineer and your role as cncf litmus kiosk project maintainer 
uh, yeah, so I am basically working uh, on the project called Litmus Chaos, which is an open source CNCF project. Right now it is in incubation. And I started as a contributor to this project in 2019. After a couple of years, I got a chance to become a maintainer of the project. So uh, once I get started, uh, we first build the application where we build the product itself. Okay. Once we have a stabilized a product ready, and when we are ready to go through a release, then we started building some E2E pipelines and then uh, some automation test cases. And once we have the complete thing covered, which resulted into a uh, full DevOps activity for me. And th this is how I started uh, the uh, DevOps role in this particular area. And coming to that, this project was uh, taken by Harness, acquired by Harness, and uh, is becoming one of the uh, components of Harness. The aim of Harness is to deliver the projects very high uh, at a very uh, efficient and very uh, high pace. So they choose the chaos engineering as also as their one of the platforms, one of the modules. So that is how I get a chance to work in there as well. Amazing, impressive insight into your role as a senior software engineer and CNCF Litmus Chaos project maintainer. So can you share a challenge you have encountered into your role and how have you overcome it? So when you talk about the challenges, um, generally, when once we, we get into these technologies, so DevOps technology, so you first need to understand what is the software lifecycle development, like what is yeah. the life cycle of a software development? So uh, you first need to understand it. What is the development side? How do you code? How do you uh, build your application and the deployment side? So there are a lot of tooling involved in it, a lot of uh, different technologies involved in, involved in it, and there are a lot of uh, substitute. For example, uh, you in CI platform itself, you will have multiple CI platforms, not only one. Okay. So, and uh, similarly for scripting, uh, what is scripting language you do you uh, need to learn? So generally, people get confused in this. When they start with DevOps, they think it's a very vast, and uh, they start yeah. learning everything at a time. But that's not the thing. You you need to start with uh, at least one application in particular branch of the DevOps or particular segment of the DevOps. For example, if you focus on getting one scripting language done, for example, Python or Bash, get one CI language, uh, CI uh, application, uh, learn one, one CI application, for example, GitLab or GitHub Actions. So if you learn any one of them, all others are very similar. You can anyways expand your uh, knowledge in that. But once you are done with that one particular thing, then it will be easier to uh, uh, get into this whole life cycle management thing. Amazing. Like uh, it, the best thing which you have said that we should not start learning everything at once. We should right. focus on one thing and then complete it and then move to the other thing, which is an admirable way of overcoming challenges in your role. Right, right. So, like, how do you balance your responsibility as software engineer with your contribution to open source project like Litmus Chaos? Yeah, so uh, we are building something in our enterprise, in our software development, also something which is related to our product only, uh, which is okay. chaos engineering. But when you say, uh, how do you uh, differentiate the rules? Yeah, there is definitely some differentiations in the role. Uh, we need to give some proportion of time to open source separately yeah. and some proportion of time to our software development. So that that you need to define, first of all, uh, you can give some 30% or 40% of time in the open source contributions as well. And when once you call open source contribution, it will be in not only related to contributing in uh, reviewing PRs or uh, adding some new uh, features or capabilities, but also involved in the discussion with the open source community, uh, learn what is happening in the market right now. Uh, acquire all those things and implement it in in, in your project and probably uh, this this give you insights right what what is going right now and you can not only help to improve your open source project but also your current role which you are working in software development program so that, that everything uh, comes in a package so this is how it works yeah so this is how I segregate and uh, work separately on both of them. So your dedication to both software engineering and open source project like Litmus is commendable. So I just want to ask, can you walk us through your experience working with Kubernetes and other container orchestrations platform? And what are the some best practices you have learned along the way? Yeah, so first of all, uh, many of the users who are not aware what these are, Kubernetes and uh, 
container orchestrations, so what, what these mean. So basically, yeah. once you install something, once you deploy your server on some VM, right? So that was okay. a traditional way we generally follow. So that could be a very um, uh, thing which you need to maintain. Uh, to remove that thing, uh, you need to have a virtualization layer. That is, okay. package everything into a container, all the dependencies. So this will remove a lot of uh, effort that is going in maintaining that particular uh, seg segment. So you have virtualized the thing, you have containerized it, uh, and you have moved your application from uh, on-prem to a specific container. Now you want to manage that container, and you don't want to do it yourself. So for that purpose, you use Kubernetes, which is nothing but a con container orchestration tool. So when once you use that, it will help you. It will automatically manages that. So your effort is just to build the application, and the Kubernetes will take care of how it how to make it more available, how to make it highly available, scalable, uh, less prone to error, uh, robust, and all the rollbacks. All these capabilities will be involved in that. So this is how uh, this is how it is its use case, and uh, you you can just start with it. Just deploy your application to that. Uh, yeah, I think this is the basic fundamental of using a container orchestration tools. Amazing. I think the, our audience are going to learn new things from this. Uh, yeah. So what advice would you give to tech students interested in pursuing a career in cloud computing, considering the rapid evolving evolution of the industry? Cloud computing is also, uh, if you see from last few years, couple of years, there is a huge yeah. A shift in the trend where uh, DevOps roles are also getting very much uh, uh, high. You're getting uh, so so many DevOps uh, role getting open. So there is a particular reasons for that. As I mentioned, first most important reason is the shifting from microservices to uh, sorry okay. from monolithic applications to microservices applications, which brings a higher stability. Second thing is software de de delivery. So your software delivery needs to be at very high pace and with very high efficiency. It means uh, you can. Today's market is very competitive. You cannot wait yeah. for six months to get your product released in the market. You have to do release, uh, maybe maybe not on monthly, maybe not on bi-weekly, then weekly, and sometimes it by a couple of days itself. You you need to uh, public uh, release itself, and that release can contain uh, the new features or bug fixes. So your clients want that. You your clients want the release in a couple of days, very very quickly. So how to do that? For do, doing that, you need to have a very strong DevOps uh, setup in your environment. You need to have uh, a proper CI CD pipeline, proper testing framework that will automate all the process and do it very quickly. Not only this, but there is the third important thing, which is a left shift in, in cloud native world. So left shift basically means uh, now you are not waiting for the ops part of DevOps to uh, do the testing and all, but you are doing the testing at the time of development itself. So when, once you are adding a code, when you are pushing a code or uh, uh, raising a pull request, you, at, the, at that time only, you need to have some certain amount of checks done, which includes the, uh, you, you can say, some uh, code stability check, lint checks, uh, security vulnerability checks. So all these things should be done at the time of development itself. So, so that you are sure that whenever you are raising a PR, whenever you are adding a code to your existing application, that code is free from all these issues. And once you are done this, the, your, your, uh, your code stability, your code quality will improve, and which will help you to uh, move the DevOps cycle very fast. And this is how you can in increase the uh, software delivery time as well. So all these factors actually uh, enables the use of DevOps engineers very, very uh, at a very high pace. So nowadays, you will see a lot of uh, requirement coming in these areas. Yeah. So amazing advice for tech students interested in cloud computing. I think they are going to learn and, and start their career on this by taking these advices. So how do you recommend tech students to stay updated with the latest development and trends in cloud computing, even after their graduation? So even after their graduation, they should go to some, join some communities. They, uh, they open source community is very good for okay. cloud computing. So that is the one important thing. Uh, just join, for example, there is a community for Docker. There is a community for Kubernetes. Um, so all these community discussions will help them to get updated with the, what is happening in the uh, particular segment. For example, what is uh, happening, what, what new is coming up. 
so right now we have moved ahead from containers also we have now switched looking towards uh, serverless deployment where you don't even want to manage the container so all these things you will get uh, into uh, some discussions into these communities there is slack channels open to them there are public meetings that uh, they do generally conduct that's a uh, that's a, a common uh, pattern that uh, open source project follow so you can uh, involve in these things start contributing to an open source project that will not only help the project to grow but also to you as an individual to improve your uh, skills um, so and there will always be open source project will be helpful for, to you in in terms of contributions so yeah i think these these are the places they can go and they can uh, do the things to get updated with the uh, current uh, uh, market so a helpful recommendation for students to staying updated with the industry trends yeah, as someone deeply involved in tech industry how important do you think networking and building connections are and what strategies would you recommend for freshers to establish meaningful connections yeah connections are definitely very much important uh, because now if you, if you if you are in con in connection with uh, good people you will have the right knowledge uh, to do yeah, the right exactly thing, right things for example uh, uh, you you never thought of uh, for let's take an example of my case itself uh, you never thought of uh, implementing something uh, so my project is basically a chaos testing project which generally comes in the ops part of devops uh, okay. and right now it is being used inside the uh, general code builds also but yeah so it's mostly the testing part so uh, you 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 build this product but once you get in a communication with the other uh, teams or other projects you will get to know their use cases is in uh, like undefined you you can have this integrated at any places uh, for example there is a ci cd pipeline that has some stages you can integrate your product into that particular stage also so we started pro uh, providing the uh, you can say modules uh, that could be integrated to other projects so how okay. this this will come up this will come up with a good networking you should have True. a proper communication with uh, the um, with, with other projects what's going on even this is not in your domain so you need to understand the what is going on there it, it, can you increase the usability of your product uh, in, in the complete whole ecosystem so you can build build that with that i think this this is how the communications helps not only this sure. uh, if uh, if you are a good communicator you will also uh, learn good things uh, join the events these events generally occur uh, once in a year or twice in a year you join the, these events you will learn a lot from uh, some good project maintainers or even even the event organizers they, they, they will help a lot agree i believe that a good uh, connections helps an individual to grow yeah definitely and we should always increase our communication skills because that helps in personal development and growth yeah definitely so what soft skills do you recommend or do you believe are essential for success in the tech industry and how can students develop these skills alongside their technical abilities so for the students who are pursuing some uh, btech or any program which is uh, now leading for towards the uh, it sector so how they can do it is uh, they, they can uh, first get started with the basic things there is uh, something called uh, you, you just get yourself familiar with linux these are some okay. tips that i could give uh, get familiar with linux because most of the systems uh, are developed on linux you need to have a good command line in interface knowledge uh, for running anything deploying your server on the linux even though you shifted to uh, containers tool for writing docker files and all you need to have the knowledge of uh, giving a linux command for every segment as i mentioned you need to have some knowledge so for scripting you can pick one language in your college itself you can pick uh, either learn one of the uh, scripting tools like python or uh, bash uh, similarly just choose one of the ci platform you don't if you are a freshie you don't need to buy any expensive courses for this all these things are uh, available in youtube so you can just go to videos find learn how to build a simple uh, uh, ci pipeline and then uh, expand your knowledge in that once you are uh, uh, once you are gone to the next level then probably you can refer some uh, some things for that, like some some course or something, but not in the beginning. Uh, just uh, get it started with the basic things, and I think this this should be uh, the key for you. For these students, they all miss out a lot of things. Just be aware of the uh, 
community what is happening inside it so i think in the previous question where you asked uh, so this is one more thing to add so uh, inside the community you you should always remember uh, that there are some programs that generally go like lfx mentee program so yeah. they give you a good amount of money also uh, and also just more than money it's more important that it is uh, it did it help your own uh, uh, profile to build very good you will learn a lot of things uh, while contributing to an open source project so you will be allowed to contribute for a couple of months even for uh, two and a half months for a project and they will uh, give you a good amount of money also and also a certification that you have completed the program so there are a couple of programs like that in in cloud native it's cncf itself and a lot of programs are there outside of cncf if you are a documentation expert you don't want to get into the coding for that also we have a, a program like that so you can just subscribe to these look to, look towards this and there are n number of projects uh, not only one or two so you can choose whichever uh, is more suitable for you whichever lies in your domain if you are an ex java expert choose a java project if you are a python expert choose a python project likewise uh, just choose the project which is in your domain and uh, contribute there so this is this is a uh, how you can uh, how a college student or a freshers can get started amazing like i would love to say to all the students and freshers who are watching this just listen to all the skills like what are the recommendations which you have got and participate on the platform and then like boost your skills that was definitely going to help your career so what are the some potential career path or job roles within cloud computing that students may not be aware of but could explore yeah uh, as i mentioned th these could be ones uh, as uh, the lfx mentees or uh, getting to gshock so th these programs just subscribe to it uh, try to find the right project start contributing in these uh, this will not only help you for a couple of months this will help you for overall achieving your goal uh, you want to uh, be a devops expert you want to be a developer a expert in any particular language choose that a particular project start contributing in it even though you didn't get an opportunity to work in that project in future you will have the good amount of experience in that so you can switch it into any other project which is on the same domain and and it can start contributing towards it so yeah the, these projects itself is a good way to get it started other than this you can start your own projects as well if you are very interested okay. just start writing your own open open source projects projects are open for everyone right you can start uh, if you have an yeah. idea or if you want to build something on top of some other projects if you feel that uh, that some you, you can choose some other project and build your application out of that you are free to do that as well so all these things you can uh, will help you to uh, like uh, build your own open source project and get a community built inside uh, around you so these things also you can do amazing so this is an eye opening perspective to lesson known career paths within cloud computing yeah. So it is said that companies are seeking skilled people and freshers are seeking jobs without enough skills. Is it applicable to your industry and how can we solve this? Yeah, I think this, this is uh, true for most of the industries right now, including exactly. my industry as well. So to solve this, there is no straightforward solution to it. You need to get it started. You need to go through this phase where you will learn particular things. Uh, so spent for my personal experience, I spent a couple of months in understanding uh, since it was a uh, startup company. So I got a chance to learn it very fast uh, There you can get a chance to learn the uh, software development lifecycle, how you are developing the code, what you're developing and how you are deploying it, how it is served to the end user, how the end user is consuming and giving you the feedback. So all these things, just understand it in a uh, couple of months, give some time then uh, choose the uh, right path which in which you want to go ahead if you want more interested on the uh, development side choose that side continue to do the development once you will learn this skill and how how you will enter in this is, is through this only you will learn this this particular uh, technology and then uh, let the company uh, acknowledge this, this and hire you it will start like this only there will always be a phase where you will uh, learn give some time in learning so that, that phase never never uh, take it like uh, uh, it's a very hard phase for me or it's, uh, it's not I good agree, for me. these this phase are basically very important this actually defines your future uh, in that particular role 
and and once you are and once you are done with this uh, once you are in, into the into the things uh, in couple of years you you'll have a good knowledge of all the things and then you are free to uh, even choose uh, a better opportunity when when you get get that agree so i think this is an insightful thought in addressing the skill gap issue in the industry uh, like i would like to know as as both a mentor and an industry expert how can tech student proactively seek out mentorship and guidance to help them navigate their career aspirations effectively in cloud computing technologies yeah for becoming mentors let let's first start with with becoming a pro contributors so when you become a contributor you 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 will have a good knowledge of uh, the uh, particular product or particular application um and the ecosystem of these applications how how such application is being how the, how the community of these applications function so you should know that and once you are aware of that when you are expert in that uh when you are good in discussions with the community you are good in uh, uh adding the features or very very uh, knowledgeable in terms of the uh, particular project you are working in then uh, you are a candidate for, for mentoring it so then then it will be a, a very good step to take that then you start mentorship then then there, there will be a time that you will be offered that mentorship by certain open source project they, they generally give mentorship after some of your contributions continuous conti okay. contributions and continuous uh, they, if they see the engagement is going on they generally consistency give, yeah they will look the consistency and uh, once this is uh, this is all good then they will offer you itself you don't need to worry for that and then once you get okay. the uh, a mentorship offer it will come up with a higher responsibility as well now you are not only contributing to the project you are also looking uh, the uh, decision making you are a key aspect of decision making of the project so you, this will also be a add on role that is added to you and also reviewing the things reviewing a new uh, request that is coming from uh, the community all these will come into it okay so this is a great advice on seeking mentorship for career growth in cloud computing at last we all would like to know what's your message for wubel community yeah it, this is a very good effort uh, first of all uh, this is something we wanted we wanted uh, we, we we all lack we all can relate to it we all lack this proper counseling in our beginning of our careers uh, it's uh, it's me or someone else whom i am aware with it so not only uh, from the beginning of the colleges in even in our schools so we we lose this uh, mentorship thing from we're not aware with uh, what are all the options open to us if if uh, these are the options how to pursue this so we are not aware of this we generally enters into a particular uh, segment and then start learning in that and then we came to know okay so this is uh, this is the role and this is the importance this is the functionality of this particular uh, segment where i am in and then i came to know that uh, these are also the uh, roles what are cloud admins what are uh, how the cloud platforms uh, de uh, defining uh, the other roles how it is different than becoming a cloud engineer than a devops engineer none of us are aware of these things so uh, these things generally come up once you have a proper mentorship in the beginning of your uh, career so you need to have that mentorship and i think google is doing that taking that effort it's very uh it's very important to us and i am really thankful to uh, the wubel team itself that they are taking up the efforts to this yeah so this is very important and uh, let's let's get involved in these activities let's not face those issues we are moving towards a uh, next level we we, are, we have to be updated we have to be updated now uh, people are searching on youtube so what are the expert and every mouth have every different words no one will know what uh, which which one is correct so you you are not sure uh, about uh, if you have a myths for particular segment uh, for example in devops you have a particular myth uh, that it is not for the freshers it is for some someone yeah. who is expert so the, let, let's break this myth let let's break all these things and uh, get started uh, get started with google itself they they are helping you a lot i can see that so i will uh, across that So thank you so much Adit sir for sharing your invaluable insight and experience with us today your expertise as a senior software engineer and CMCF Litmus Chaos project manager has enriched our discussion and inspired us with 
your depth of knowledge, your contribution have left a lasting impact, motivating us to excel in the field of cloud native computing. We sincerely appreciate your time and dedication in enlightening our audience with your wisdom and expertise. Thank you so much, sir. And we will be reaching out to you with a formal request to join Google as a DevOps mentor and delivering your wealth of experience to empower our community further. And we are very grateful to you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to Google uh, team and thank you, Apita, as well.